Good morning, all. Here I have a power board, a CPU board, the control board, and the keypad from a Fuji Electric Frenic 5000 G11S. I'm going to power it up outside the drive because the drive is still broke. I'm waiting on an IGBT for the drive that was shorted and cracked open. And in two of these firing channels, I'm waiting on parts. I've removed the shorted parts so that it won't interfere with us powering up this board on the bench. In order to power up this board, we have to apply a fairly large voltage to this connector right here, where these two yellow wires are going. And in order to do so, in order to create that high voltage, I have a voltage doubler whose output, DC output, is going into the switch mode power supply of that power board. And I have a variac that Right now it's set to zero volts out, going into the variac. So we have AC in from the variac and DC out from the voltage doubler. This meter right here set to volt mode is going to look at the DC output of the voltage doubler so that I don't overvolt anybody when I'm increasing the voltage from the variac. We're gonna creep up on the voltage until this system powers up, until the switch mode power supply on the power board powers up and brings up the CPU board and the keypad operator panel. Let's get close to everything and we'll see if we can power it up. And after we get it powered up, getting myself sidetracked here. We're going to look at a couple of ways that you can protect your data inside your drive from being changed. Now there's a parameter here called F00 data protect. When that value inside that parameter is set to zero, you can change parameters from this keypad. If the parameter inside F00, the value is set to 1, you cannot make changes to your parameters inside this drive from the keypad. Now there's another way to perform that lockout function. You have these inputs, and I'll, I'll show you, we'll get closer to all this. You have these switch inputs x0 I'm sorry x1 x2 x3 x4 x5 x6 x7 x8 x9 these inputs on this terminal board right here on the CPU board are programmable and one of the programming functions is a value of 19 and that is write enable for keypad data change permission, in parentheses, WE-KP. So if I were to set any of these parameters right here, E01 through E09, to the value of 19, we would have to use a switch input to unlock that keypad. So we're going to perform all these experiments after we get this drive powered up. I hope I don't lock myself out of that drive by doing all this. <laughs> now we're going to watch this DC voltage at the output of the voltage doubler. And we're not going to, not going to overvolt ourselves here. There's two capacitors here in the switch mode power supply section for filtering. We don't want to overvolt those caps. We especially don't want to overvolt these large caps. We are going to increase our voltage 
while watching this DC voltage right here into the switch mode power supply. Zero volts in to the variac, 86 volts DC into the power board. I'll be ready to shut everything down if things go badly. We have 200 volts DC slowly increasing the AC voltage out of the variac into the voltage doubler. It's 275 volts DC and climbing. 280 volts AC. We're still not powered up. There we go. We just came on. 291.6 volts DC. Let me let me go ahead and bring it up to 300 volts DC there. There's 305 volts DC. 306 volts DC. We're going to stop right there. Now we have an alarm. Uh, OH2. That's a thermal alarm. Let me cycle power and see what it powers up as. Alright. We've just turned off. We're back on. And we do have an alarm. OH2. I'm going to put the camera so we can see the display and what we're going to do to set up that F00 parameter. Got to make room for the camera. There's our alarm, OH2. I looked that alarm up, and it says that it's an external trip, and that I have to jump terminal board X3, which is set to uh, parameter EO3 value of 9, to CM. So I'm going to do that real quick. Let me power down, and we'll jump that out. And since the drive is not connected, we'll probably get more alarms than just that one. Here's X3 and CM. Now X3, let me get my close-up glasses on. I can't see what I'm doing. There we go. Here's CM terminal. Here's X3, input terminal X3 is set, it's programmed for external trip. Let's see what we get now. Oh, H1. <laughs> OH1. That's uh, that's probably the heat sink terminal, uh, heat sink thermal, and that connects to this red connector right here. All right, we're in position where we can perform our parameter change to F00. Data protection. We want to change that value in F00 to a one. Let's hit program. There's data set. Let's hit the function data key. And that brings us into the parameters. Now first let's see what parameter F00 is set to. The data protection parameter. Hit function data. 
and it is set to zero. And that means that we can change parameters. Let's get out of here. Let's go see if we can actually change a parameter. Let's change the operation method. That's F02. Hit function, data, and it is set to one. Let me write that down so the old man's memory can get it changed back to what the value was. F02 has a value of one. see if we can change it. We're going to change it with the up arrow key. Okay, we've changed it to a 1. Let's change it to a 0. Those are our only two options, 0 or 1. Hit the function data key. Let's go back in and make sure it did change. Yes, it did. It changed to a 0. Let's change it back to a 1. There's one. Hit the function data key to enter it. There we go. Now let's go back up to parameter F00 and let's change that. Now this one is a little bit odd in, in how we have to do this. According to the instructions, to change it from 0 to 1, we have to press the stop and up arrow key at the same time and then hit the function data key to store the new value. Okay, stop and up key. There, it changed. Cool. Now let's hit function, data, storing. Now let's go back to that same parameter, operation method, F02 parameter, and see if we can change it like we did it the last time. Look at that. We can't change it. Data protected. <laughs> it works. Son of a gun. Well, let's go back to parameter F00 data protection. And unlock the keypad. And to unlock the keypad, to go from a 1 to a 0, We have to press the stop key and the down key at the same time. And then enter it with the function data key. Okay, stop and down. There, we have a zero. Storing. Now let's go to parameter F02, operation method. And see if we can change it. Look, it doesn't say data protected now. We can change that. Awesome. Let's change it to zero. Okay, it's a zero. Let's change it back to the original value of one. With the up arrow key. Hit the function data key. It says storing. Let's go back and look at it. Awesome. <laughs> so that does work. Parameter F00, data protection. Now, let's go look at locking the keypad from the terminal board. Let's press program, press today a uh, function data for data set. Now we're going to scroll down to parameters E01 through E09. Those program the inputs on the terminal board. Oh, shot past them. Now here's E01, which is the X1 function, X1 being an input, 
let's go see what it's set to and we'll write that value down okay that's set to zero E02 which is the X2 input that's set to 1 E03 X3 input function that's set to 9 9 is our external trip it's programmed for external trip that's where we jumped out the X3 to CM to clear the OH2 alarm Press function data key. Now we're on E04, which is the X4 input function. Let's press function data. That one's set to 3. Press the function data key. Now we're on E05. That's the X5 input. Let's see what value it is by pressing the function data key. It's set to 4. Press function data. Now we're on E06, the X6 input on the terminal board. It's set to 5. E07, the X7 input. Pressing the function data key to see what the value is. It's set to 6. E08. The X8 input, let's press the function data key, it's set to 7. Last one, E09, which is the X9 input on the terminal board, it's set to 8. Now, I've got that wrote down. i got all those values wrote down. We're going to change X9 input to the value of 19 and that is a switched input for write enable for keypad data change permission now we have the values we can change it to 0 to 35 but we're going to stop at 19 pressing the up arrow key there's 19 press the function data key it's storing. Now, let's get out of here. And I'm going to put a switch from X9 to the CM terminal. And we'll see if we can lock the keypad with that switch input to X9. Let's connect our switch from CM. Let's get our switch in here. From the CM terminal. Get in there. There you go. To the X9 terminal. There we go. There's X9. There's our switch. Let's see what happens now. Let's turn the switch on. Go to program. Data set. Let's go to F02 operation method. Press the function data key. Let's see if we can change it. Okay, it looks like we can change it. Yep, we can change it. Let's go back up and see if it changed. Yes, it did. Let's turn the switch off. See if we can change it. Oh, it's not blinking. Look at that. Okay. So, with X9 
terminal to CM terminal turned off, open, we can't change the data. Okay, let's back out. Let's turn the switch on again. And look at that, the cursor is blinking. We can change it. So with the switch closed, the keypad is accessible. But with the switch open, the keypad is disabled. Let's get closer. Let me power down. I'll get the camera closer and y'all can see what we just did. Okay, press the program key. Select a data set. Press the function data key. Let's go to parameter F02 operation method. Press the function data key. Now the switch is closed. So X9 input is connected to the CM terminal. And you can see we have a blinking cursor. And we can change that value from 1 to 0. Let's go back in. Let's change it back to 1, the original value. Press the function data key. The up and down arrow key, select your, your value. And now it's set to 1. Now, we're going to open the switch from X9 to CM. We're going to go back into F02 parameter, operation method, and look at that. We have no blinking cursor on the value of 1. Up and down keys have no effect. That's amazing. <laughs> okay, now I got to go back in and change the X9 parameter E09 back to its original value of 8 from 19. Let's open the switch. It is open. Let's get out of here. We'll close the switch. Let's go down to E09. Here's E09, X9 input function. Right now it's set to 19 and we have a blinking cursor because we've closed the switch from X9 to CM. Let's set this back to 8 with the down arrow key. Press the function data key. And now Let's make sure it's changed. We'll go back in. Yes, it's set to 8. Amazing. Let's look at F02 again. Make sure it's back to 1. Yes, it's back to 1 with a blinking cursor. Now with X9 set to its original value of 8, this switch will have no function as far as locking out the keypad goes. There you go, folks. Wasn't that fascinating? <laughs> we learned something new. I've never done that before. All right, now you know how to lock out the keypad to prevent people from changing your parameters. Two methods. One from F001 and one from programming the functional inputs, the X1 inputs, to 19. Changing one of those inputs to 19. In our case, we changed X9. All right, all. Hope you enjoyed that video. That was a lot of fun. We'll see you next time.